Hey guys, welcome back to another product profile. I'm James with Hobby King alongside Tom Hunt, our uh, pilot for the day. Uh, and we got the brand new Dorafly Excalibur. I wanna apologize, it is a bit windy here this morning out on Eastern Long Island, but uh, the weather is absolutely stunning. It feels good and we can't wait to get this bad boy going. Tom, tell us a little bit about the Excalibur. Well, um, it's advertised as a warm liner. It, uh, you know, as, as a word, I would say yes. It's a, it's certainly not a hot liner, but it's a great flying model. The power is exceptional. Um, the climb rate is probably in the vicinity of three or four thousand feet per minute. I mean, it's incredible. Wow. And um, uh, the speed is very good. It's got a very good folding prop on the front. Ooh, um, I'm sorry, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's got a very nice folding prop on the front. It gives it a great climb and, and it has some great speed. Yeah. And um, the the model is. Uh, uh, extremely rigid. I was very surprised. Yeah. Uh, uh, steel tubes. So uh, you can see a pair of steel tubes, uh, thin wall steel tubes in the in the wing to make it nice and rigid, so you don't get a lot of flexing and and a lot of uh, uh, unwanted motion yeah. in an airplane that you're trying to fly fast. So uh, yeah, when I first held it, I was surprised the weight. You know, feels robust. Like yeah, there's more than just yeah. your average foamy. You know, right, right. And the finish of the foam is very nice, very slick. Although obviously you can see that it's foam cell. Uh, if you feel it, it's got that very smooth, which yeah. which is impressive because. Um, um, obviously, the smooth uh, feel for it is uh, translates into speed, and that's lacking in a lot of uh, non-composite airplanes that they call hotliners. Okay. They uh, very difficult. They get going fast just because of a lot of skin friction drag. But um, the other thing I noticed while I was flying this airplane is that um, not only is it solid feeling when it's flying, um, but um, controls are very crisp and responsive, and um, the airplane carries a lot of energy for for as light as it is. You know, because yep. it has to be reasonable light. It carries a lot of energy in it. And it's quiet when you turn the prop on. Yeah, you guys um, are going to love this. When quiet you it. means low drag. I mean, even with the scoops that they've got, there's not a lot of whistling going on. So it's really nice that it's that quiet. The V-tails work very nicely as rudders. You program into your radio. Uh, you don't have to. You could fly this, what we call feet on the floor. Okay. You no know, rudder pedals. <laughs> All right. All right. But um, um, it is nice to have the the, uh, the rudder available to you if you want to mix it in. And um, just, a, just a great flying... Uh, Semi hotliner. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, being that it's a Dora Fly, you know you're going to get good quality. Now, we're going to run this. It takes 4S power. So, we've got a graphene in here, 2200 4S 65C. So, we can't wait to get in the air. So, Tom, let's go take it for a flight. Great. Sounds good. All right. With the power that this airplane has, it's very easy for the pilot to just go up to about half throttle and launch the airplane. There's absolutely no effort at all to get it out of your hand. And she's off. Beautiful. Now, guys, we put a Mobius on the top of the plane just to get another view because uh, we did it out at the beach during the product video and it looked gorgeous. So we'll have that up there. But, Tom, again, that looked very easy on oh. the uh, hand launch. Yep, about half power. Just give it a, you know, a authoritative toss. You don't have to throw it like a baseball. Yeah. You just got to get it going in the right direction. I have always said throw an airplane like the motor's not going to start or it's going to quit. Right? When yeah. you, as soon as you launch it, that way you go at least you have some airspeed when you're, you know, if you lose the motor, God forbid you throw a prop or something, at least the airplane can be flown straight ahead and landed. So you don't want to just let it go. Just give it an authoritative flick of the wrist and make it go. There's a high power climb out. Nice. Look at the speed getting up there. And of course, the color on this day is nice. The white, when you get to see the white, but... Oh. There it is. These uh, airplanes have a tendency to disappear, <laughs> okay, edge on, because the thin wings, the, just the V-tail, it's not a lot to see. So it's not an airplane you want to fly too, too far away. But well, at least back to what you were saying about how quiet it is when it glides, right? Oh, yeah. It's you know? incredibly quiet. That's part of the reason. <laughs> it is yeah. aerodynamic. And, it, you know, obviously you're not you're not uh, flying a glow airplane. It's making noise all the time, so even if you can't see it, you can hear it. So uh, guys, actually, Tom, we're going to be quiet on this pass. Give us a uh, nice slow glide pass, okay. quiet, and then we'll turn around and we'll have you whip that graphene by for a speed pass. Okay. Just so they get the idea of that. You can barely hear the airplane go I mean, by. It's a little windier. The, cat, the microphones will make it sound even a little windier than it actually is, but you can hear nothing as uh, that baby comes by. So now Tom's going to bring it in for a nice fast pass. Right. Because this is what we all want to do with it. <laughs> right. this, this is a fast pass motor off. 
Okay. All right, so you can hear that when the prop folds, how nice and quiet the airplane still is, and as quick as it is. There's just the gentlest of whistles, ever so slight. All right, now we'll come through with a high-speed pass with the prop spinning. Beautiful. And power off right now. We got the perfect day, old blue skies, yeah. here she comes. Power on, full, and come down. Push, push, push. Oh! And because it's so gusty out here today, yep. you see that little bit of a wing hop, but I have flown this airplane on a calm day, and it's just beautiful to fly. It just grooves and cuts, very much like a, a pylon racer, yep, you know, yep. rather than a, a sailplane. Gotcha. But it is very easy to fly. I mean, with the CG in the correct place, um, the slightly forward swap wings and the good airfoil that's on it, it just makes the airplane very stable. Yeah, it wobbles a little bit, just a yeah. little windy. It's for the gustiness, because like yeah. I said, it's, it's, uh, it's a rather stiff wing, so it's got some elasticness to it that you don't get um, in just a, you know, a simple foam core, uh, you know, foam wing with a, a couple of carbon or fiberglass spars in it. The, uh, the steel spars that are in there are necessary for the strength, for the yanking and banking, um, but they do act a little bit like springs. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. when you get a gusty day, you'll see a little bit of hopping. But it doesn't do anything to the airplane. It doesn't change the way it flies. It's just very nice. Now let's show off the uh, air brake feature, might as okay. well, you know, that the prop does. Uh, we got a lot of nice slow motion of that earlier this morning, so Alex can definitely show you that footage. But um, the break, the break on the ESC is very strong, which is very good. It'll cause that prop to fold in a millisecond. And obviously, that saves you on those landings. Yeah. Here we go. Well, that. Ooh. That and cleans up the airplane for much better glide. Yeah. You, know, yep, you don't yep. want that prop spinning. It's a lot of drag if it's spinning. You know, at idle, or even with windmill. Yeah. And um, I no, mean, that is a feature that it's nice if you need to slow the airplane down keep the throttle up just a couple of clicks above uh, you know your off position and you can actually uh, get the airplane to slow down a little bit with the windmilling prop yep now one of the beauties of this thing is depending on how you fly you could get a ton of battery life or you could get very short battery life right I mean sure if, if you you're wanted gonna, to sure if you're gonna hop on it all the time and do you know real long climbs at high current and uh, you know, within the limit of your vision, obviously, yeah. um, and keep the motor on a lot, you're going to burn up the battery pretty quickly. But the whole beauty of this thing is that it's such a graceful flyer with the power off that uh, you just climb, use the battery power for maybe 10 seconds, 15 seconds, get it upstairs, and then glide it around. And do, yeah. you can even do a lot of aerobatics. You can do loops and rolls, uh, even with the power off. I'll do uh, go upstairs here. I'll turn the power off, and now I'm doing some rolls with the power off, and it rolls very equitably. And uh, you know, a little dive and do a beautiful loop. So uh, nice. it it can do a lot of aerobatics with the power off that uh, save you quite a bit of battery power and obviously increase the time of flight. That's always helpful. Now, if you guys know, you've probably seen our Will It Slope video when Stuart was in Hong Kong. They always had a chance to slope. I know he would have wanted to have that there. But in Australia, I believe they just found a slope site. So. Stuart is going to take it there and get some footage of it sloping and I'm sure it's going to do that with just as good a ease as when it's gliding up here. Yeah, I did a lot of slope flying when I was younger and uh, when I lived in California for a couple of years and these are the kinds of airplanes, we didn't have that many good electric airplanes at the time, but we had a lot of these types of airplanes that we would fly, um, you know, at dry land. Um, you know, for thermaling, and then we'd take them out to the uh, the slopes and we'd let them up a little bit, get them a little heavier, yep. and uh, flying on the slopes and flying literally all day, fly until your transmitter was dead, <laughs> or the receiver pack in the in the airplane was dead. Um, that you know doesn't happen now, obviously, with your battery pack driving your radio and your motor. Um, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I had a nice uh, warm day out here, calm, that I could get this airplane to thermal. It's it's light enough, um, and it's clean enough that I'm sure that, uh, you know, I could ride some nice thermals here and even extend my time uh, that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Well, Tom, I think that pretty much is all we have on this bad boy. You could fly this for so much longer, but we want to spare you, the viewer, that extra time. So how about we give him one more fast pass and okay. then we'll bring it in for a landing. Very good. It's about, I'm pretty sure the battery is getting 
pretty close because I've been I've been on it pretty hard every once in a while. Yeah. Showing you guys what this airplane can do, power on, power off. But one more. That's why we pass. put a graphene in it because it'll keep that punch. Climb out, turn the power off, and set up for landing. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to come in from the south, so I'm going to turn a little bit here because of the way the wind is blowing almost uh, 90 degrees to our normal runway. Yep. So I'm going to make a long sweeping pass out to the west and then come down the tree line. I'll probably actually get some ridge lift from that tree line with the way the wind's blowing. And I'll just sneak her in. Look at that, she glides. Oh, yeah. So nice. The, the sink rate is very nice. You don't need a terribly big field to fly this in. You can set the airplane down just about anywhere you want with some, some management. Obviously, it takes some getting used to it and know the sink rate of this airplane. Um, it actually would probably even benefit for those guys that are really into this kind of airplane. Is to, and they probably know already to put to what we call spoiler ons. Use the okay. ailerons as spoilers. Okay. Don't use them as flaps. Use them as spoilers. Make them come up a good 20 or 30 degrees, and that airplane will sit. Like it was just like some the hand of God came out and pulled it right down to the ground. <laughs> nice, yeah. nice. Well, Tom, as always, fantastic flight. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us this morning. Now let's take it back in the studio and show you how we put it together. Okay, thank you, Tom and James, there in New York, um, mentioning and showing the versatility of the new Durafly Excalibur. Speaking of which, James also mentioned that we would be showing you some slope soaring with the Excalibur. And indeed we are. We're going to go and do that right now. There's a local slope site that I found here in Sydney. I will show you the Excalibur in its sloping element. And then once that's done, then we'll come back and do the actual assembly uh, slash unboxing. And it does fall together very, very easily, as you will see. So let's get the sloping done. And then I'll see you back here in just a few minutes for the out of the box assembly. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now, we're going to go over there out the wind, let the paragliders go up, show you how to attach the slope nose cone, and then show that in action. Okay, so whilst we wait for the uh, paragliders to finish their flying slot, I'm going to show you how to change the uh, warm to hot liner Excalibur, the powered version, into a uh, sloping me machine with the provided slope nose cone. Now you'll see this in the box and some of you may wonder exactly what this is if you didn't read the online manual and it is exactly that is a slope nose cone and very simply you just need a Phillips screwdriver and a pair of pliers or a uh, spanner to take the prop and spinner assembly off along with the prop shaft or the prop adapter. A little bit of blend um, you choose your size to secure the nose cone and you are ready to go. So I'm going to quickly run you through a layman's version of that very quickly. I've already unscrewed the screws. You can see them down here and they would just come off with a Phillip. The spinner comes off. Now I've already loosened this nut, but obviously you'd, uh, it'll be tight when you do it. So you just loosen that off. Then this entire assembly just comes off. This is the prop adapter or the shaft adapter, if you like. The, uh, the housing for the propellers and the propellers themselves they all go to one side. Now you've got your nose cone. This is molded in a certain way. And when you look at it, you may think, oh, it's misshapen. It's not. It's actually molded to fit the contours of the fuse large perfectly. So you'll just need to turn it until you get the best fit. And I believe that is boom there. Now with the nose cones, uh, with the nose cones, uh, with the nose cone fully pushed on, you should see that the trading edge should just be in front of the hatch. So you can still get the hatch on and off nice and easy. And then you take your blend and thus, you just tape it on around the side, rub it down nicely. You don't need to go over the top with tape because remember, the force acting on this nose is pushing the nose further onto the model. So it's really just to hold it in place. That's nice and secure. And hey presto, you now have a um, fully legit sloping Excalibur. So let's go try that on the slope now. Okay, so we are back up on the slope. I'm going to shout now because I forgot that I need to talk you through the actual electronic setup. And it's pretty straightforward. That's the power glider there. I've got my regular 20, uh, sorry, 1800 four cell pack in as I would with the power version. And all I'm going to do is push it just a little, I'm going to undo this and just push it a little bit further forward to compensate for that missing weight of the uh, spinner and propeller. And then, of course, I just plug it in when I'm ready to go. In fact, I can do that now. Plug it in when I'm ready to go. Like so. Tuck the strap back there. Like so. Make sure everything's in. Push it down the side. Canopy's on. Now, I've got my throttle disabled, so I can't accidentally spool the motor up. 
and essentially that's it. I'm going to keep it in high rates when I'm flying on the slope because I want as much control authority as possible. Uh, but balance wise, it pretty much balances exactly as it would in the powered version. So there's no special consideration there. But for you guys, so you can see what the model's uh, up to when it's up there. We're going to stick a Mobius on and hopefully get some additional in flight footage. So uh, obviously, it won't be as a pure glider as it would be without this, but it'll at least. Uh, give a nice view for you guys to see what it's like over this fantastic slope site. So without further ado, let's slope the Excalibur. Now, apologies for the stupid hat, but uh, it's going to blow off my head otherwise. So I'm shouting because uh, we haven't got the lapel mic, but... It's flying very, very well. Now, this is about a 23 knot wind at the moment. It can fly in a, in a calmer slope wind if you like, but the stronger the wind, the, the better it flies. It penetrates nicely. It keeps its momentum really, really well. I'm not pushing it uh, massively at the moment simply because of that Mobius. It's uh, not as efficient as it can be. Uh, and uh, the wind is switching around here and there, but I'm just going to keep going along the slope and we'll see if we can get a few aerobatics in. But, as with all slopers, you can fly for hours in this configuration. And with the 1800 mAh power 4 cell, that's even days because those servos use little to no current. So I hope you can hear this. I think we're about done with the talking for this. This is the slope version of the Excalibur. Right, so that was the Excalibur sloping at the local slope site. As you can see, worked very, very well indeed. Now down to the more detailed part. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the contents of the box out, then talk about the spec, and then we'll quickly assemble it. And again, I'll stop if there's any points of note, but there isn't really. And then pretty much we'll be done with the product profile. So without further ado, let's start. Now, the first thing you'll notice is just how small the box is. This is a 1600 millimeter span, but because it's a two part uh, wing and with a attachable towel, then it actually fits into a very, very small box. So because the cameraman has told me that this box is blowing out the shot, I'm going to remove everything very quickly from the box. And whilst I'm doing that, you can see just how nicely packaged it is. Some of the carbon reinforcement. These are the uh, slope nose cones that I spoke about just a, a minute ago in the sloping section. Uh, there are some other parts which I'll come to uh, in a minute. The included standard uh, carbon fiber propellers. Pull this part out here. And we have the mounting accessories, hardware and spinner. What else have we got here? We've got the vertical v -tows. These are the combined elevator and rudder or v tail if you like. They're with the servos pre-installed or pre-attached. And then we come to the final wing panel just here. Blow some of that away. And that is the box. Note that there is no physical instruction manual included with the Excalibur. And there's several reasons for that, and we'll come on to that. Uh, well, actually, we can come on to it right now. Um, to reduce production time and to reduce production cost, and to be that little bit more environmentally friendly, we've actually done away with the hard copy of the manual. You can, of course, still access it on the web uh, listing for the Excalibur. There's a little video here showing you exactly where you can find that. Uh, soft copy of the instruction manual under the files tab of the listing and also what that means is the recommended items in the manual you can click on hopefully you can click directly on and go straight to those products too so check that out and now with your contents laid out on your table you should have your soft copy of the manual in front of you and we can get on with the build now as I mentioned before the Excalibur really does fall together there is only a few screws and it is all screwed together. It, there is only a few screws to assemble the model. It primarily is concerned about uh, screwing the uh, V-towel on and screwing and mounting the wings and then mounting your propeller and spinner. All very straightforward, so it's nothing that you really need to see. However, do a quick time lapse now of the assembly. And then when we come back, we'll finish off uh, touching on the specs of the included components and model, and then we will finish with this Excalibur product profile. So let's get on with the build time lapse. Okay, so I told you it would be quick, and indeed it was. No real uh, notes of interest on the assembly. If you follow the manual uh, to the letter, you'll have no troubles whatsoever. Important point to note on the extension leads for the towel servos. 
do make sure again as you can see or as it mentions in the instruction manual that you use either some heat shrink or some clear tape just to make sure those extension leads connect and hold to the servos that's an important point other than that it pretty much goes together exactly as it says in the manual you'll notice in the manual as well the mention of op I'll take this off of optional propeller blades. There are in fact two uh, blades available for this model out the box. There are the included 13 by 7 stand propellers, great for all round pilots and flying. However, if you have more fun experience and more stick time and you're what we call a more professional pilot, then you will want to try the optional 13 by 8. They do make a difference between the stock prop, just gives you a little bit more speed and performance. However, the trade-off being that you get a little less flight time. So, if you're looking for that kind of experience out of the box, do go for the optional bigger 13x8 Pro Propeller. Now, whilst I've got this off, we'll keep it off because I want to quickly just talk through the model itself. Hatch comes off, it's a nice uh, latch on this system, and if I pull that off, behind uh, the training edge here, this is where, again, it's in the manual, this is where we'd suggest you put your four channel receiver. You can use a six channel receiver uh, if you want to individually make the ailerons into flapperons. Great for slowing the model down when coming into land. This is where your 18 to 2200 four cell pack would fit. It would fly on a three cell. If you want to ex experiment with that, go ahead, that's fine. And you can see it pre-installed the 60 amp speed controller and then the motor here at the front. Now I'm gonna put the canopy back on. You'll again see how it locks nicely in place. Whilst I'm doing that, that reminds me, we do have, of sorts, an FPV can uh, canopy available for the Excalibur. Now, we've not produced this, however, we do have the part, the uh, file, rather, available for you guys to download on the Files tab. If you go to the Files tab on the listing, you should see two things, at least two things to start with. You'll see the instruction manual, which I keep referring to, and then there's this additional print file for the FPV canopy. Okay, so here is the FPV canopy file uh, for 3D printing so you can customize the Duraflight Excalibur to fit your own FPV equipment. This is a typical FPV camera shown here. You can see the mounting for it here. That would come away. So we've done some of the work for you and then the idea is, is that you modify this yourself to fit your own FPV equipment. Uh, so you can put the VTX underneath here, or put it on the top here, put some slots in here for VTX cooling, whatever you want to do, it's all for you. Now finally, what else do I have on the table? Well, if we ignore the propellers, we've got these two parts, uh, bits of plastic. Now you may be wondering what these are for. Uh, maybe it wasn't so clear in the manual for you, but I will tell you. If after a very, very bad uh, crash, you notice some damage around the fuselage perhaps, these are simply supplied for you to uh, apply on the side of the model there, like so. Kind of as like a temporary band-aid. Now, this is not meant to be a permanent fixture to the model. It's only if you need to uh, patch up a crack on the fuselage whilst you wait for your new uh, replacement fuselage to come in. So it's kind of like a friendly band-aid for you there. And then the only other piece of plastic included that you've already seen previously in the video, but I'll show you again, is the slope nose cone. You've got to turn that to it fits, and it fits around about there. Just tape that on, and hey presto, with the spinner and propellers removed and that nose put on, you now have a fully slope-ready Excalibur. In terms of setup, you just put your battery in, in exactly the same location as you would do in the power mode. So that about wraps it up for the product profile on the brand new Durafly Excalibur. You've seen it flying off a slope, you've seen it flying with power, I've spoken to you about flying FPV, and you've seen pretty much how it goes together. It is very, very simple to put together. And it's a beautiful model to behold, both smooth and strong, and very, very good looking. And of course, it's got bags of performance. Uh, check out links below this video to all the items mentioned in this product profile. And I will see you again soon for the next Durafly launch.